It's only episode two, and we're already making babies. I'm Sean the Shepherd, and this is Adventures in Minecrafting. Look at him. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Welcome back, everybody. We're starting off today in a creative test world because I want to show you a little bit about what it takes to make a village breeder. Here we have the basic elements for a village breeder. Obviously you need two villagers. You're gonna go have to get them, you're gonna have to find them. This is one of the reasons it was such a great thing that we spawned right in a village because that village is gonna provide us with all the villagers that we need. Now, not only do you need two villagers, but each of those villagers is going to need a bed. They need some place to sleep. No sleepy, no babies. No bed, no babies. But one bed isn't gonna be enough. You're gonna need additional beds because there needs to be a bed not only for the villagers but there needs to be a third bed they won't make a baby if there isn't a bed for baby now the second thing you need is food we're going to be using carrots today but you can use any food you want you can use bread you can use uh carrot uh we, we are using carrots you can use potatoes uh, you can use any any type of food that you want but the villagers need to have enough of it that they can trade it back and forth Contrary to popular belief, they don't actually need to work. They don't need a composter. They don't need something else. We're going to see that in one of the examples that we're going to look at here in just a minute. Uh, but if you want your farm to be automated, then you are going to need to provide them with a composter because that composter is going to turn them into farmers. They're going to automatically farm whatever crop it is that you're growing, and then they can automatically share that food and make a the babies. Now here's our first example. This is a classic farmer breeder. It works similarly to the one that we're going to be building a little bit later today, but it has one fatal flaw. Can you see that fatal flaw here? Notice that there are four villagers in this village breeder when there are only supposed to be two. You see, the way these classic ones were built were based on child pathfinding, and that pathfinding has changed a little bit with 114 and 115. Now the babies, instead of wandering away as children will do and wandering under these fence posts and off where the water streams can carry them away, now the children like to, as you see here, have conversations with their parents. These are good kids. Let me tell you, these are really good kids. And they like to jump on the bed as we saw earlier. So what this means is they don't pathfind away from their parents like they used to, and that means that this version of the breeder just doesn't work anymore. Now, there's a second version that's become very, very popular. You'll see this on places like Hermitcraft. Uh, this was designed by Impulse SV, and the idea here is that you've got two villagers in this little spot actually standing on a fence post right in the middle, and these villagers sleep in the two beds that are allotted to them, the two beds that they have chosen. But when they wake up, all they can do is stand on that fence post. I call this the classic villager on a fence post, baby down the chute method. Because what happens is when they have a baby, that baby can't stand on that fence post. So the baby falls right down the chute, lands at the bottom, and is promptly available for you to move off wherever you need them to go, a la Oliver Twist. Now, this is the village breeder that we're going to be making today. You can see already a baby's been born and grown up, and that baby is exactly where you want them. Unable to pathfind to the extra beds, unable to get back to the farm. So these two villagers are going to be the mainstay of the whole farm. But rather than just looking at it here, and I think I've shown you enough that you can pause the video and build it yourself, let's go over and actually build it.
Well, here we are. Let's go ahead and come on up here and take a little tour of our villagers new home. And you thought I was gonna keep them in that rock box forever. Nope, here they are and they are perfectly happy. Looks like they've planted some things around their house. I added some detailing up there, some shutters on the windows. And over here, I just, I didn't like the way the beds looked. So what we've done is made sort of a uh, storage container, a little place out here, uh, still fully accessible, still uh, able to be path found to. Oh, hi, hi, Mr. Gollum. Hi, how you doing there? You know, you're looking a little wounded. Let's, uh, let's fix you up here. Here we go. There you go, much better. What were we saying? Now, uh, let's see. So yeah, they are still, they can still pathfind to those beds. That's the beauty of trapdoors. And as you see, we've got a little guy right down there. I think this has been built for maybe 10, 15 minutes and we're already getting babies. So in a little bit here, we're gonna have to find a way to carry them off so that they can stay in a holding tank until we need them, until we have built the villager trading hall, which I am thinking is gonna go right up on this hill. I don't know if you can see this, but I have been clearing that away. That's where we've gotten most of the wood to build this. We've gotten from up there, and I'm thinking right up there would just be a beautiful place. You can see a mansion type structure up there, villager trading hall inside, storage inside, and you know we need that storage. If you look down here, you'll see we've uh, built up quite the little camp, and as usual, Yep, chess monsters are chess monsters. Okay, so here we go. Here is their little home, beautiful little home. Now, if I need to get in there for any reason, we've got a gate right here, and all you have to do is hug the wall. They can't hug the wall, but we can hug the wall, so let's go in and see what their little abode looks like. We've got a step down, a nice little rug. Looks like they need to sweep up a little bit. But no, they've they've fixed it up nicely. A lantern on the ceiling, some plants. See, nothing, nothing low class about this. Perfectly good for these guys. Hey, guys, thanks. Thanks for all you are doing for this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's hug the wall here. And we're out. Grow up safely, little guy. And you'll notice also mobs cannot get in. Oh, oh, do, do, do you want us to leave you alone? I Really, I mean, we can leave you alone. Here, we'll, we'll go over here. So you see what I'm saying? Works beautifully. Now remember, there is a warm up time for these. I've talked to a lot of people who have built uh, village breeders and they worry because it's been 30 minutes. It's been a couple uh, villager days or I'm sorry, a couple of Minecraft days, and uh, they don't have any babies yet, but nope, there we go. Two babies already, and like I said, it's been maybe 20, 30 minutes. So, let's get some stuff together and see about carrying those villagers off. Okay, so I've gathered together everything that we need to carry these little babies off, and I'm going to show you how to get them out of here and to where you need them. So let's hop down here. And the first thing we wanna do is block these guys off. Don't want them to be following us while we're trying to do this. And we're gonna take that out. We're gonna go down one more level. That'll get us underground. And you notice there are five, five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna extend that another three to make eight. So six, seven and eight. Now what we need to do is make a tunnel beyond this. So this is gonna be our wall. There we go, looks like we're under the mountain. So five, six, seven, eight, and right there. We'll make this our wall. They're all gonna come right up against that wall and then we need to make this block out of stone. We'll make this one glass just so we can see what's going on inside of there. Let's widen our tunnel. And there we have it. We just need to put down a couple tracks. Put down a powered rail right there and we can power that rail by this block. 
See, that will power that one. And then we need some regular rails coming away, just like that. And how about over here, maybe right here. Oh, perfect. There's our way in. Let's put a little light down here so that no mobs spawn. And then what we need to do is go back up, hop back in. And we're going to knock these guys down a couple levels. Add some water. And they will be all set. There we go. I'll take them right down to that corner where they can easily be picked up. Now, the question is, how do we how do we get out of here? Okay, well they're stuck. They're stuck. I don't have silk touch yet. Ah, oh it hurts. But there we go. Now we can see what's going on in there. Now they have plenty of light in here. Let's put one more torch down just to make sure that no mobs spawn in there. Although the mobs can't spawn. There we go. And there you have it. And with that complete, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Adventures in Minecraft and look forward to seeing you next time.